relationships involving heat of reaction. These, these can seem um, a little complicated to students. They're way simpler than relationships with people. Okay, so relationships involving heats of reaction. If we multiply the reaction by a factor, we need to multiply delta H by the same factor. So let's think about this. If I am burning carbon, carbon plus oxygen to make CO2, this much energy. So the heat of reaction is this many kilojoules for the specified amount in moles for the reaction. So one mole of carbon, one mole of oxygen. If I burn twice as much carbon, I should get twice as much heat, right? So if I multiply all the coefficients by 2, I have to multiply delta H by 2. If I multiply 1 by 3, I have to multiply the other by 3. If I divide it by 4, I divide by 4. Do the same thing to both sides. Does that make sense? If the reaction is reversed, the sign of delta H is changed. So burning the carbon to form carbon dioxide is exothermic, right? It's releasing energy. If I do the opposite reaction, if I take the carbon dioxide and I make it decompose into carbon and oxygen, that should absorb energy, right? It's like melting and freezing. We can't just have energy being created or destroyed when we do backwards and forwards. It'd be great if we could, but it's not possible. So if we switch the order of reactants and products, then we change the sign. It's like multiplying by negative 1. And then this is the one that, that can be a little confusing. This is called Hess's Law. And Hess's Law says if you can express the chemical reaction as a series of steps, then the overall delta H is equal to the sum of the delta H's for each individual step. So if we're starting here with A and two B's, and we're making those into C, and this is an endothermic reaction, we have to put energy into it, and then the C decomposes into two D's, and that's a highly exothermic reaction, then from the starting point to the ending point is this difference. Delta H is a state function. How you get there doesn't matter. Just like the elevation change, if you start at sea level and you hike to 10,000 feet, doesn't matter if you took the long windy path or you went straight up the mountain. The difference from where you started to where you began, ended, is the same. So the difference between the energy here and the energy there is the same regardless of what process we used. And this is important because we can use this to predict energy changes for reactions that we haven't actually done. So what we're doing here is we're taking chemical reactions, chemical equations, so A plus 2B going to C. Okay, and so that has a delta H, delta H1. And then we take C, and that goes to 2D, and that has a delta H, and calling it delta H2. Well, if I add these two reactions together, like we did with the half reaction method, this is making C, and then the C gets decomposed. We can think of that as canceling out, right? So we add those together, A plus 2B makes 2D. And Delta H for this is going to equal delta H1 plus delta H2. It's like an elevation change, you know, maybe you went three quarters of the way up and you camped, right? You spent the night. And the next morning, you got up and you went all the way to the top. So the first day you went, 7,500 feet, and the second day you went up in elevation 2,500 feet. Your total elevation change is the sum of the two days. Or you could have gone up in a helicopter 1,000 feet above the top of the mountain and then come back down. Then it'd be 
plus 11,000 and minus 1,000, the change is the same. Does that make sense? We can hope so. Okay, let's do some practice. Find delta H for this chemical reaction. And we are given some other chemical reactions where delta H is known. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out, well, how can I combine these equations to get that equation? You're like, ah, this is like one of those logic puzzles. Okay, the good news is if this stuff just like horrifies you, you can pass the class without getting this. Okay, but give it a shot. It might not be as bad as you think. So how do you even approach this? Well, what we can do to these equations, there's, there's three things. Well, two things, really. We can multiply all the coefficients by a factor, or we can reverse the direction. We can reverse reactants and products. And then we're going to add together the delta H's. So how do I know where to even start? Well, I'm going to look at what do I need to end up with as reactants and what do I need to end up with as products. So maybe let's look at this first reaction. Here I've got two no, and I need no in the product, right? Well, and then, and then there's NO2. NO2 is a reactant. Oxygen doesn't show up anywhere. Let's just ignore him for a while, and hopefully we can get him to go away. Um, but I need to s switch this reaction around to get the reactants on the right side and the products on the right side. So I'm just going to write this reaction backwards. So I want, didn't really mean to literally write it backwards, but it turns out that's what I'm doing. Kind of mix it up a little. It gets boring doing the same thing over and over again. Did I do it right? So this is the same equation, same coefficients, but I reverse the reactants and products. If I do that, what do I have to do to delta H? I have to change the sign. So that was negative. Now it's positive for this reaction over here. So now if I just looked at this, um, this is closer to this. Um, I've got an NO2 here and I've got NO over here, but I've got oxygen over here. I'm going to need to get rid of that. And I also need to get N2O on the, on the reactant side. So I can look at both of these. Um, I'm going to look at this bottom one first because this is that missing reactant that I need. Um, I need N2O as a reactant, so this one I'm just going to copy down in the same direction. And that's 2N2O. Uh, Oh, I wanted to do that a little lower. Oh, well. I didn't do anything to this. And so when I write this over here, I'm not going to do anything to delta H. So they don't no. These, these are going to be what they are, some positive, some negative, and we'll just add them all up at the end. We're not trying to get them equal or anything, not like the electrons. So I've got two... NO2s, and I've got two N2Os. Up here, I only want one of each of those. Um, over here, I've got two NOs, and I've also got oxygen and nitrogen, and those don't show up here at all. I need something that's going to get rid of those. And I have this equation here that's got nitrogen and oxygen. If I put that in this forward direction, so I've got nitrogen and oxygen here, I could use those to cancel out the N2 and the O2. So N2, I'm going to be a little sloppy and leave the G's off, um, gives me two more no's. That's 
words that you have to say to your daughter when she wants to go to Walmart at 9 o'clock on Sunday night to buy black jeans for a costume that she's not going to end up wearing anyway. You say, no! Okay. Is this going to work to cancel out what we've got over here? I've got one and two, and over here I've got two of them. So that's not quite going to work. What I need to do is I need to multiply the coefficients in this middle reaction by 2. You okay with that? If I multiply that by 2, what do I have to do to delta H? Multiply by 2. Okay, so let's see where, where we are now. So two nitrogens cancel those two nitrogens. Two oxygens, and over here I've got one here and one there, a total of two, so those cancel out. So let's write down what we have left. So I have 2 and 2 O, and I have 2 and O2, and I have 2 no's and 4 no's, 6 no's, one for each child. Awesome. 6 no. So I copied down the things I haven't crossed off. Well, we also need to then add up delta H. So I've got 113.1 plus 2 times 186.6 plus negative 163.2. So this is going to give me, I'm, I'm just putting a positive sign there to emphasize that, yes, I considered the sign, and it's positive that many kilojoules. Is this delta H for this reaction? No. This is delta H for this reaction. What's the difference? This has twice as much of everything, right? If I'm reacting two moles and two moles to get six moles, I'm going to get twice as much energy changing, right? So I need to take what I got here and divide by 2. So I'm going to divide by 2, and so that will be a 1, this will be a 1, this will be a 3, and I also need to divide this by 2. So the heat of reaction is plus 161.55 kilojoules. And that would be for the N2O plus the NO2 going to 3, no. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good question. Where did this come from? This came from taking the heats of each of the reactions that I'm adding together and adding them together. So it's this plus 2 times that one plus this one. I changed the sign on this because I reversed the reaction. I multiplied this one by 2 because I multiplied the coefficients in the reactions by 2. Any other questions?